Hello, this is the solutions to problem set three. So let's start looking at the first problem. Here I give you a very general power series with three variable coefficients in it. A, which is going to be the center of the series. B, which governs the exponential term. And C, which is the exponent on the polynomial term. So for example, when A is negative two, we get X minus negative two or X plus two to the K b is 3, we get 3 to the k, and c is negative 1, we get k to the minus c, which is the same as 1 over k. So we end up with this formula, the sum 1 over k times 3 to the k, x plus 2 to the k. So <clears throat> that we use the ratio test to find the radius of convergence, the usual form x plus 2 to the k plus 1 over x plus 2 to the k represents the first factor, we have a k plus 1 in the denominator and a k in the numerator for the second factor, and then 3 to the k plus 1 in the denominator, 3 to the k in the numerator. Uh, these, the x plus 2s cancel out, leaving an absolute value of x plus 2. The 3s leave a 3 in the denominator. The k over k plus 1 approaches 1. So we get a radius of 3 when we multiply by 3. And lots of people had trouble with this, um, and it's really worth emphasizing. So most people wrote this down fine, but then subtracting 2 from all three sides was really hard. So you want to write it out slowly. Minus 3 is less than x plus 2, which is less than 3, because x plus 2 is between positive 3 and negative 3. And then if you subtract 2 from all three sides, minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5, x plus 2 minus 2 is x, 3 minus 2 is 1. Or you can say all the points a distance 3 from negative 2 takes you plus 3 up to 1 and minus 3 down to minus 5. Okay. <clears throat> that leaves two endpoints, x equals 1 and x equals minus 5. When you plug in x equals 1, we get 1 plus 2 to the k divided by 3 to the k. 3 to the k over 3 to the k is 1. You end up with a series sum 1 over k. Notice the pattern. The endpoint, the endpoints of the interval, always the exponentials cancel out and you're left with just the polynomial term. So in this case, the only, going back here, the only polynomial um, term is the one over k. So we're left with one over k. That's a p-series with p equals one. So the right endpoint diverges. If we plug in minus five, we get minus three to the k over three to the k. That becomes minus 3 over 3 to the k by the rules of exponents, which is minus 1 to the k, which is an alternating sign. You don't get minus 1. You get minus 1 to the k over k. That is the alternating harmonic series. The We know that its positive version, which we saw above, is 1 over k diverges. But because by the alternating series test, 1 over k goes to 0 and is decreasing. So the left endpoint converges conditionally. Notice, like every other problem we've done, the left and the right endpoint are exactly the same except for a factor of minus one to the k. Okay, so we got a radius of three. We went from minus five to one. We include minus five, so it's a square bracket. We exclude one, so it's a uh, round bracket. The left endpoint is conditionally convergent. The right endpoint is divergent. Now we're going to go back and do that with the variables. We started out with a ratio test. We do the exact same thing. The only differences are where before we had negative 1, now we have c. Where before we had x plus 2, now we have x minus a. And where before we had 3, now we have b. Okay, and let's just stay careful and remember what happened before and expect not the same but similar things to happen. The absolute value goes through 
B, which is positive, and K to the C, which is positive, but gets stuck on X minus A. So we get an absolute value of X minus A, top and bottom, um, one higher in the top, so we end up with absolute X minus A on the top. The Bs, we end up with one more B on the bottom. The K plus one to the C over K to the C, no matter what C is, that approaches one. Um, and we are left with uh, absolute x minus a over b is less than 1, which makes b the radius of convergence. Before a radius of convergence is th was 3, b equals 3, so these agree. Okay, And if they didn't agree, if you got the radius of convergence was 2, and here you're getting that it's b, that was a good sign to go back and check your work in both cases. Um, the, so the radius is b. We, just like before, absolute x minus a is less than b. That means x minus a is between b on top and minus b on the bottom. If we add a to all three sides, we get a minus b and a plus b as the upper limits. Okay? It is always a minus r a plus r, where a is the center and r is the radius. And that, when a is negative 2 and r is 3, that recovers the right formula. Okay, Once again, the one we got before. So once again, you can check what you're doing. <clears throat> when we plug in to the left and right endpoint, we're plugging in um, k to the c times a plus b minus a to the k over b to the k. This becomes b to the k over b to the k, so the whole thing just becomes k to the c. The left endpoint, same argument, gets you minus 1 to the k times k to the c, because it is a minus b minus a to the k over b to the k. <laughs> that becomes minus b to the k over b to the k, which, same argument, is minus 1 to the k times k to the c. Those are just what we got before when c equals negative 1. They agree. Okay, here people had a lot of trouble. This series, k to the c, there's no a in it, there's no b in it. So nothing about a and b can show up in the question of whether this converges or not. This is a the right endpoint is a p-series with p equals negative c. Okay? p-series converges absolutely when p is greater than 1, so that is when c is less than negative 1. So our negative 1 was right on the cusp. If it was negative 2, this would be the series 1 over k squared, which converges. If it was minus 1 half, it'd be the series 1 over the square root of k, which diverges. And this was kind of a tricky point, so in that case it would converge absolutely. When c equals negative 1, we saw the right endpoint diverged, the left converged, and that's going to be generally true if we have a p-series with positive p. Right? So if c is between negative 1 and 0, then we're getting um, 1 over k to the p, where p is between 0 and 1, that series diverges, but it is decreasing and approaches zero, so the alternating series converges. So in this region, the left endpoint will converge conditionally, the right endpoint will diverge. If c is greater than or equal to zero, then the divergence test tells you that both of these diverge. In general, the endpoints don't care about A and they don't care about R. Those both get cancelled out and you end up with two usually polynomial series. That was an important point here. The idea of problem two was to have you step back and look at what the steps, the commonalities in the process you've been doing are. Okay, so once you've learned to do the process, you want to step back and think about how are, how are all the different problems I've done similar. So 
the first step in the power series is you find the radius of convergence. This is done for us. The radius is 6. The next step we don't get to see is you find A, which is the center of the series. We're not told that. And it is always the case that this um, that the interval is from a minus r to a plus r. So in our case, a minus 6 to a plus 6. As soon as you know a, you will know the interval. We don't know a, but we know the right endpoint. Right? Once, once you've done the second step, found the interval, the third step is you plug in the right and left endpoints. So here, where we said, um, ooh, way back. Um, when we said plug in x equals 1, we ended up with the x equals 1 got rid of the x, right, because we're plugging 1 in, and it gets rid of all the exponentials. So here, when we see use the exact same wording, plug in the right endpoint x equals 4, that's telling you the right endpoint is 4, okay? So a is minus 2. So ten, this told you the right endpoint. Knowing the right endpoint told you the center. And when you plug that in, sure enough, we got a polynomial term. There's no exponentials in here. The sum is over q. Presumably, that's the variable Tibetans use for their infinite sums. But that doesn't throw us. It's just the same as if they had written minus 1 to the k over the square root of k plus 5. What does that term do? It is um, alternating. Its positive version is 1 over the square root of k plus 5 by the limit comparison test. That behaves the same as 1 over the square root of k, 1 over k to the 1 half, which diverges. But the function is decreasing and approaching 0, so even though the positive version diverges, the alternating version converges conditionally. Okay, so this asked you to go back and do some of the basic series stuff. The center we saw was at negative 2, and that means the left endpoint is negative 2 minus 6, which is minus 8. If we knew what x was, we could plug minus 8 in and get the series for the left endpoint. We don't, right? And just sort of coming up with something to plug in uh, is not going to help. But what we do know is that in every problem we've ever done, the left endpoint and the right endpoint have no exponentials, and one is minus one to the k times the other. So that means that the left endpoint has to be one over the square root of k plus five. And that, as we already argued, diverges. So that means minus eight is not in the interval, but four is. Okay, question three takes a look at this thing 2k factorial. So for 0 it's 1, for 1 it's 2, for 2 it's 24, for 3 it's 720, after that it gets very big. Um, and this asks what happens when you divide um, 1 from the next. So a3 over a2, or let's do it in sages. Um, when k equals 0, we get um, a1 over a0, which is 2. When k equals 1, we get a2 over a1, which is 12. When k equals 2, we get a3 over a2, which is 720 over 24, which is 30. And if you went further, which was pretty good idea. You got, I think, 56. So those are the numbers that we're getting. Um, and we want to find a formula for this. So a couple of things that, so many people recognize that 2 times k plus 1 is 2k plus 2. So you could just as well write this as 2k plus 2 factorial over 2k factorial. What you cannot do is say 2k factorial 
equals 2 factorial times k factorial, or 2 times k, or anything like it. You can see that's not true, because, for example, when k is 3, um, this would be, this formula would be 2 times 3 factorial, which is 12, but we saw that um, 6 factorial is 720. Okay, so this is not a correct formula, nor should you expect it to be. Factorials grow rapidly, um, so you shouldn't expect that you double the input, you're going to double the output. Um, so that doesn't work. What does work? Well, um, I suggested using the um, recursive formula. The recursive formula tells you that any number factorial is that number times the previous number factorial. Okay? You don't have to do it on every factorial, right? So if you, if you, um, you can see that the top is a bigger number than the bottom. So applying the recursive formula to the top gets you closer to the bottom. If you apply it to the bottom, you're getting further from the top. So this is equal to 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 factorial over 2k factorial. But then we can apply that again. So that's 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 times 2k factorial, right? Any number factorial is that number times the previous number factorial. Finally, the 2k factorials cancel out, and we just get this expression. And sure enough, this does agree. So when I asked, does it agree with your answers in A, I meant when you divide the examples you computed of 2 times k plus 1 factorial over 2 times k factorial, do you get 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1? And sure enough, you do. When k equals 0, you get um, 2 times 1, which is 2. When k equals 1, you get, uh, um, sorry, you get 4 times 3, which is 12. When k equals 2, and you plug that in, you get 6 times 5, which is 30. When k equals 3, and you plug that in, you get 8 times 7, which is 56. You get exactly the same formula. So yes, many people said no, because these were asking for the individual terms, and these were asking for the ratio. So you don't get the exact same numbers, but they agree. Your formula correctly predicts the things that you, you got by hand. Okay. Um, I have taken up too much space here, so I'm going to clear out a little. Um, next, I asked you to decide if this sum, 2k factorial over 2k plus 1 factorial, converges. Notice it's the reciprocal of what I asked you to find a formula for. So this sum is the sum, k equals 0 to infinity, of... 1 over 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1. These are the same sum. Okay? So, uh, this is, um, how do we uh, approach that? That is, well, we can approach that with a limit comparison theorem. So, we use the limit comparison theorem. We compare that to um, the simplified version, which is 1 over 2k times 2k is 4k squared. So we use the series 1 over 4k squared. Um, I asked people to check, and very few people really wrote out the check because this was a hard problem set. I, um, oops, there's a typo. I, um, uh, did not take off much if people seemed to understand what they were doing. So, in the top, we put our original, terms of our original series. On the bottom, you put the simplified series. Uh, if you, um, <clears throat> we 
can simplify the upper series and then flip over. So we get 4k squared over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 2, and that approaches 1. So it passes the test. Those of you who use the simplified series 1 over k squared, that does in fact pass the test. You get the limit equals 4, and you have to remember that the fine print of the limit comparison theorem said that as long as the ratio approaches any finite number, you're okay. We always set it up so that it would approach 1, and that's what 4k squared did. Um, so if you're, if you're sophisticatedly using the full strength of the limit comparison test, you could do 1 over k squared. Um, if people didn't check and used 1 over k squared, uh, I would take points off. A lot of people also used 1 over k squared plus k, which is a simpler series, but you're still not done because you would then have to simplify that again to get um, a p-series. So we got 1 over 4k squared, which is 1 fourth times p-series with p equals 2, which converges. Okay? And then the last thing I asked you to do, having um, figured out, this is what I would say is um, this formula up here that we found is the recursive, the version of the recursive formula for the operation 2k factorial rather than k factorial. And um, that comes up, for example, in this is the Taylor series for cosine. Um, so I asked you to check for convergence, find the radius of convergence. So we use the ratio test. And we get, I don't know why I don't have a solution written there. Um, we get on the bottom x to the n over 2n factorial. And on the top, we get that where every n is replaced with n plus 1. So remember, it's a 2. You put parentheses around the n and you replace it with n plus 1. So it's not. 2n plus 1, it's 2 times the quantity n plus 1. That's important because when you um, uh, when you flip things over, bring in the absolute value, you get 2n factorial over 2n plus 2 factorial, and you see that to make sense of this, you need to use the recursive formula, which is 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. As n goes to infinity, that goes to 0, which is less than 1, which means that this series converges. Oh, there's the ratio test. I don't know where that all that space came from. Sorry. Which means that this converges for all x. So the interval of convergence is from minus infinity to infinity. One last thing to say, since you're now working on problem set five, I've had a little bit of problem with people leaving this almost entirely blank, or um, uh, which was one extreme, or simply forgetting to mark off um, the people that you worked with. So I would like to see this table filled in in problem set five. I made it a little bit bigger and there are fewer bits, so hopefully it's not quite as overwhelming. And I dropped some of the later stuff, so it was not redundant. But in here, if you are not putting in some assessment of your each of these and identifying exactly who you talk to for each problem, then I will take off points. Okay? Um, and if you know, you're doing it egregiously, I will not grade it. Uh, because that, re I understand that it's confusing and kind of annoying, but that is an academic honesty issue. So please, if you asked Nancy about 1B, put Nancy in there. If you think there might be more than one person in the class with that name, put their full name in. And if you went to Wolfram Alpha for 1D, put Wolfram Alpha there. Okay. That is problem set three.
I will be doing a solution set for soon.